We can set up a simple circuit in order to investigate the behavior of a simple cell. Now this cell is in a component holder, so we can attach some wires to it. I've got one of these going to an ammeter, which we can use to record the current. And then we've also got this thing here. Now this can be set up as a variable resistor. And if we put one wire in at this end and the other wire up here, What's going to happen is the electricity is going to go in at this point here, it's going to move through that coil and then we've got a sliding metal contact that we can change its position and this means we can have a low resistance where we've got a short length of wire or we can have a larger resistance where we've got a larger length of wire that uh, the electricity is going to be moving through. And what we can do is we can change this to actually change the current that's going to be flowing in that circuit. But we can also investigate the potential difference across the terminals of this cell. So I have here a voltmeter, just a standard one, and we're going to be measuring the potential difference across the terminals. And this is often referred to as the terminal PD. So I'm going to put that in there. And at the moment, when nothing else is connected, this has a value of 1.6 volts. OK, so I'm going to connect it up now. And as soon as I connect it, uh, that number is a bit smaller. But what we can do, we can change this number here. And if we change the variable resistor so it's got a large resistance, that number stays at about 1.58. And we've got a low current of about 0 0.03, 0 0.04. But as we have a lower resistance in the external part of that circuit, what we find is that the value of the terminal PD goes down when we have a higher value of current which is moving through that circuit. And I guess if we go to the most extreme case, when we've got this with the least value of resistance, the terminal PD in this case is about 1.32 when we've got a current of about 1.33 amps flowing. And when we move this the other way, we can see how the terminal PD increases when we have a lower value of current. Now this is a setup that we can use to actually investigate the internal resistance and the EMF of one of these cells. So an equation concerning internal resistance is that the EMF is equal to the terminal PD plus I times R where that's the current going around the circuit and little r represents the internal resistance of that cell. Now we could rearrange this and say that V is equal to E minus I R and we could also rewrite that as V is equal to minus R I plus E. Now the reason I've done that is if we take some data and we have values for the terminal PD and values for the current we can plot them with on the y-axis uh, we have values for V, so that's going to be on our y-axis. And on the x-axis, we have values for the current. And what we then find is when we plot this, we get a straight line. And that means y is equal to mx plus c. And if we actually look at the data, what we get is a line with a negative gradient. Now that means if you work out the value of that negative gradient, you can multiply it by minus 1 to get a value for little r. Because minus r is equal to the gradient. And of course you can take the line back up to the intercept and therefore if you read that off that should be the value for the EMF of that cell. That's effectively um, the voltage of this when there's no current flowing in that circuit. And so by taking values for the current in the circuit as you change the external resistance using something like a variable resistor we then get values for the terminal PD and when we plot them we get this straight line where the gradient and the y-intercept give us some data about the internal resistance and EMF of a cell.